My name is Dave Higwood. Uh, I run a game studio in San Diego, California um, called Psyonix. The Unreal Engine allows us to develop much faster than we've been able to in the past at a much lower cost. It has all of the features and the uh, rendering capabilities, just a million kinds of tools and things that allow us to develop our games and actually focus on the game that we're making as opposed to uh, the, all the technology that has to be behind it. The game's called Wizzle. It's a casual game. Uh, it's from a 2D perspective and uh, you're a fuzzy little character named Wizzle that uh, swims around underwater. The Unreal Engine saves us a lot of time because it allows our designers to build game prototypes really quickly uh, using their editor, using their tools, making game characters do what we want them to right out of the box. We don't have to spend a lot of time designing the technology that allows us to do these things. Uh, we can just get right in and, and try things out. We can immediately add lights. We can immediately add materials and effects to that. So uh, a, a designer who understands the engine can prototype something uh, in just a few hours that would take, um, you know, without the engine it could take weeks or even months. Kismet is an in-editor scripting system. A lot of parts of building a game are scripting things and, and making game events work. So Kismet allows us to have one of our designers actually go in and use a visual interface to define what is going to happen in sort of an event-driven system. So, for instance, we may want to activate music. We can simply drop down a level started event and then we draw a line from that to play the music. And it's as simple as that, but it allows uh, level designers to go in and very quickly do uh, different kinds of game events that, that normally you'd have to have a programmer come in and do. And they can do it very quickly and very instantly and actually see the results immediately. So this is FAT, the Unreal Physics Asset Tool, and this allows us to preview uh, what our character's physics animations are going to look like um, right in editor. So he's able to manipulate our character and move him around in a kind of a ragdoll mode um, where his, uh, his body parts are kind of flapping around and so on. And Basically we can see how that reacts and we can tweak parameters until we get exactly what we want. The physics asset tool is just another example of how we can go into the editor and what we see is what we get. We can do it right from the beginning. Um, we can use this actually in our prototyping of the game. We don't have to leave it for later when we're getting really intense in development. We can add this as, as part of our prototyping phase and actually see what we're doing. That saves an enormous amount of time. You don't have to have a whole team of programmers coming up with how are we going to build this physics system and and how are we going to coordinate with our art team and our level design team to understand exactly what they want to do. Well, water's always been uh, a big challenge in games, trying to make it look good or, and, and look accurate. Um, one of the advantages of using uh, the UDK is that uh, we got to use uh, some of the systems specifically designed for Gears of War. In particular, we use something called the Fluid Surface Actor, which uh, in games like Gears of War is used for when a character walks across a surface of water and you actually see the water disturb. Um, we took it a little bit further and actually placed it in our underwater 2D world so that the characters are always sort of immersed in it. So anytime there's any movement on the screen, you see ripples and waves and so on. But Beyond that, we actually put more layers on top of it even. Um, we added uh, material effects around uh, the level that uh, simulate caustics. Um, we have light beams coming down in various planes and showing dust particles floating around. And then we, we use the post-process system to actually create a sort of wavy effect over the screen. The Unreal Editor really allows us to do a lot with animation. Um, a lot of it can be done actually in the, uh, in the editor itself using the anim tree. So we have our artists build uh, the animations in uh, the 3D modeling programs like, just like normal. Uh, we import them and then uh, we, we put them in a visual interface called the AnimTree inside uh, the Unreal Development Kits editor. And the AnimTree basically allows us to uh, blend between different animations. In our particular game, uh, we use it for you know, the Wizzle characters smiling and, and making different expressions and, and faces and things like that. And we can dynamically blend those animations together 
Um, you can trigger it through Kismet, you can trigger that as through script, but the really great part about the Anim Tree Editor and the thing that saves us the most time is that we can go in and we can move sliders back and forth and actually see what the final product of those animation blends are going to be. So the amazing thing about the UDK is that it's being given away for free. It's got all the features of commercial game engine, the best engine out there, Unreal Engine 3. Uh, that takes away all the excuses for, for making uh, you know, an amazing game that can actually compete with, with any game out there. And you've got all the tools right at your fingertips.